Retro Show is brought to you by DNA Dimension Designs, the best custom retro gaming decals in the game, period. Also now available, Glenn's Retro Wear, t-shirts, jackets, mugs, carrying bags, and lots of other items. Show your support for Glenn's Retro Show and wear something with style. Because Miko, Miko, see who this is from. Hi, everybody, and thank you for joining me on today's edition of Glenn's Retro Show. Today's video is really just a pickup and donation video, but I got some really cool things here, and I'm not really sure which one to start with, so I guess I'm just going to pick up what's in front of me uh, to start off. And this one is uh, the Atari joystick uh, keychain. Uh, there were three different versions of this released, and this is the final one I've been trying to get hold of. I got it for, I think, $9 off of eBay, sealed, so it was a bargain for me. This one has uh, Centipede and uh, Yard's Revenge on it. Uh, the other one's a paddle that has Pong, Breakout, and Warlords on it. And the other joystick version is Asteroids and Millipede. And they're pretty neat. Now, I actually haven't played them because they're all still sealed uh, in the box. Uh, maybe I'll take them out one day. But uh, these were released a couple of years ago uh, by Basic Fun, who actually makes a lot of the new uh, machines that people are purchasing now at like Walmart. And they're, they're kind of nice. So. Pretty glad to finally finish that collection piece up. Let's see what else I got over here. Okay, another thing I got off eBay, I got this for nine dollars. Uh, it was listed as non-working. It's an Entex uh, Pac-Man 2. Uh, it actually looks pretty good uh, from the outside, but um, it was pretty dirty. And I did get it to work. Um, the uh, contacts for the battery actually were completely corroded off. Uh, and also the uh, Player One uh, arrow joysticks, like whatever you want to call them, weren't working at all. So I thought it'd be a fairly simple fix. And I'm actually going to do a video on this one, how I did repair it. But basically, it required a lot to clean the contacts. I kept them all original. And I was actually able to repair the snapped off uh, connector for one of the terminals. Now, on this here, the, uh, the uh, carbon dot pads, usually I can fix them. These were so bad, hard, and, and brittle, they basically disintegrated. So I was like, oh, what am I going to do? And I did have some uh, micro switches uh, I had, uh, from previous projects. And I actually soldered all of these with, you can hear that, micro switches. So again, I'm going to do a video on this one showing you how I repaired this and changed out all the buttons in here with micro switches. And it works really well. And it's also going to be a precursor to my 10-inch uh, uh, Data East joystick fix, where I'm going to be basically replacing the uh, rubber pad they have in there because the joystick is very mushy with little micro switches. Now I've done them before but this one is really tight and so is that one so I got it to work. So look for the repair video on here and also an upcoming video on the uh, joystick modification to the 10 inch uh, Data East uh, My Arcade Arcade. 
All right, let's see what else we picked up this month. Well, if you've seen my previous uh, pickup videos, you know I picked up a couple of Microvisions, and uh, the Milton Bradley Microvision was the first handheld cartridge-based system uh, back in the 80s. And the reason I picked them up is on Atari Age, uh, there is a project to replace the screens in them. Uh, they have what's called screen rot. The screen stops working. The LCD technology back then was not very good, but it is today. So I'm expecting to get new displays. So anytime I see any uh, eBay uh, at reasonable prices for the games, I go for it. And I got these all for 30 bucks. I thought that was pretty good. I got Mindbuster boxed, which is kind of nice. And um, the uh, instructions are still in here, as well as the, uh, the game cartridge as well. And it looks in pretty good shape. So I actually haven't played uh, the Milton Bradley system uh, in forever, early 80s really. So I'm dying to start playing it again. I also got Pinball, which is another game, complete in box, and again the uh, cartridge is in pretty, pretty good shape, and it's also complete with instructions. So can't wait to try out the Pinball. Again, the games are going to be very, very basic. Uh, it's a very low resolution screen, but I'm still dying to try it out. And let's see what else we got here. We got um, baseball, and again it's box. The box is in pretty good shape. And uh, so is the game cartridge. It's pretty clean. I mean, I'm kind of amazed how some of these are in really good shape. A lot of times, things to look out for are the uh, the buttons here. A lot of them have really been abused. I know the European one actually had like rubber chiclet keys, which I wish we had over here. They're a lot harder to uh, to ruin. But uh, these are looking pretty good shape. And again, we got the all important uh, instruction manual as well. And in that same pickup. Uh, the very last one I got in that one was bowling. And uh, let's take a look at the box. The box does have a little bit of a tear in it. I'll, I'll be able to fix that with some, some type of glue. But it does have the, the manual and it has a very good, once again, the button is a little worse for wear. The go is a little, eh, it's not as good a shape as the other ones, but the main cartridge looks okay. And there's something else I noticed in the box. Now, one of the things that was kind of affecting these Milton Bradley units, aside from the screen rot, which really wasn't happening until you know, many years later, uh, during its initial run, there were problems with the machines frying themselves. Uh, the cartridge connectors apparently would build up a static charge, and the act of putting them in the unit would cause enough static electricity to fry the unit. So they started giving out these little, these little uh, copper pads that you put down in the cartridge area. I'll do a video on that. Um, this one's still unused, um, and basically the static would hit this before it got to the cartridge connector and frying a unit. So uh, that's kind of interesting uh, history there on the, the Microvision. And uh, let's see what other things you picked up this month. Again, I got some really good things still to show you guys. Okay, another thing I picked up was actually on Facebook. Uh, one of the Facebook groups called the Atari Marketplace. I noticed advertised by a gentleman, I hope I get his name right here, it's Robert Dro. Uh, he had to advertise an Atari Heavy Sixer, and this thing's in really good shape. Get this thing out of the way here. And um, you can very easily tell if you have an Atari Heavy Sixer versus the Light Sixer. First of all, the curve here is not a sharp angle um, and it's much thicker, number one. Number two, you pick this thing up, it feels like you're picking up a kid. I mean, these things are really heavy. And these are the original, built in California, Sunnyvale, California, Atari units. Now, I never actually had this back in the day. I had the Sears Telegames version of the Heavy Sixer. And looking back at it, you know, in its own right, it was really an attractive unit as well. But I was always jealous my cousin had an actual Atari, or mine was a Sears version. But again, both look great. This is in really, really good shape. And I picked this up, and it came with some other things as well. But uh, man, this thing is in really good shape. I'm happy to have gotten this. But he also had the original uh, joystick that went along with it. And you can see they're in really good shape. I haven't tried this out yet, but uh, they look like they're in really good shape, so I'm not too worried about it. So we have the two joysticks. He also had uh, the paddles that went along with it. I haven't checked these yet for jitter, but they seem like they're in pretty good shape. But I also got a bunch more things. I got a bag of games. And there's some in here that I didn't have before. Uh, we got uh, Popeye and uh, Spider-Man. What else we got in the bag of goodies? Reactor. I got a couple versions of Miss Pac-Man. You know, that's a really good port of Miss Pac-Man, unlike the Pac-Man version. 
Hope that's not in this bag. Ugh. We have, ooh, Pigs in Space. Never had this one, so that'll be kind of good. I know a lot of people really disdain this. I think it was a crash of uh, the video games back in the day, but it's not that bad a game if you read the manual. Uh, and I take my hat off and how quickly he programmed it. We have some E.T. What else we got in here? Great game, Yars Revenge. Oh, Spitfire Attack. I never knew about this game, so this I'll have fun taking a look at. One of the original games back in the day with that heavy sixer, Slot Racers. Me and my cousins play this game a lot. What else we got in here? First time I rode to Atari for some asteroids. I have a couple copies of this, but it's a good game. It's a good port. This is a very good port. Berserk. Atari did a good version of that. Too bad they couldn't get speech on it, but there's actually a hacked version of this if you get the Atari box and you can't have speech. But even playing it as it is, it's a good game. Ooh. Now this was a bad game. Um, yeah, I was very disappointed getting this game. Um, yeah. A couple versions of combat. Launch title, and a pretty good solid game. I had a lot of fun with combat. What else we got? We still got a couple more left. We have Defender. And what else we got here? We have Outlaw, another one of the early launch games. And we got Qbert, and that's a pretty good game. I haven't played it on the Atari 2600, but I played it before. So I do want to thank Robert Dro. Uh, they arrived safe. And thank you very much for it. I really appreciate it. Let's see what else we got. Okay, now, this is a toss-up between these last two items I want to show. I'm excited about both. Um, now, if people watch my channel uh, on Facebook, Lens Retro Show Game Gurus, or the Tiny Arcade fan page, will know that my dog, Blue, my dog, Blue, chewed one of the things Adam from DMA Dimension Designs made for my son, Cole. It was a little Minecraft sword. Blue got locked into the gaming room. He does it once in a while, and he got bored and he chewed it up. Well, Adam was kind enough to make me an even nicer one, here if I can get it up here, a nice little Minecraft sword, and he did a really nice job with this. Uh, he, the guy does really nice work. Uh, Adam makes decals, he makes nice things like this, he does a lot of things, including now, he makes a little Nintendo cartridge that changes the decals on it. It's an LCD screen, and it shows all different carts, and that's pretty neat. I'm really thankful for this, but he gave me something even more exciting that really, when I saw it, I was like, wow, that's amazing. This just goes to show you what kind of uh, work that Adam at D-Main Dimension Designs can do. He actually made me, I get this uh, really so it's not in the light too, too bad, a Glenn's Retro Show plaque. And this thing, so I'm sorry about the light reflections on here, but this thing is pretty neat. When I took this out of the box, I was really excited. And I'm not sure where I'm gonna put it. You know, maybe I'll even put it right right here I'm not sure but this is real nice and Adam uh, he supports the channel in, in great ways and I'm happy to have him as a sponsor this is really nice Adam thank you very much this thing's awesome okay the last thing I'm gonna show you today I'm really excited about and um, it's not assembled yet it literally just came today I came home from work and it was waiting there for me here this package came for you take it do it do it do it do it do it do it my friend uh, Dwayne Ringo, um, he's he's pretty uh, active in the gaming community. Uh, I'll put a link down below. Actually, I already have a link down below to his uh, Facebook group. He builds a lot of custom uh, machines, little mini arcade machines with the Raspberry Pi. I mean, I make them, but I use pre-existing gaming consoles to convert them. But Dwayne actually makes these uh, by hand uh, out of wood. He's working on a Star Wars arcade. Build Pac-Man's. If you go to Arcade USA, uh, he's known Willie for a long time. He built quite a few things for him, including an arcade with interchangeable control panels, so he can change the joystick out for a, for a trackball, for a spinner, for Tempest. So it, it's pretty neat. He 
started working on something recently and I talked to him about it a little bit and uh, he made something for me. Now it's not complete, I'm going to put the guts in myself, but I'm going to show you something here that I think is pretty darn cool. I'm going to have to put this together really carefully so you guys can see it. Because again, it's not, uh, it's not done, but it's going to be a mini pinball machine. And again, I don't want to damage it, I'll show you this part first here. Um, I still need to put decals on it and put in the hardware, which I'm going to do. And I'll do a video on this as well. But Dwayne does a really nice job. I mean, this looks like plastic. Uh, the paint on here is such a nice job. Um, it's going to house a 7-inch uh, IPS uh, screen in there. It's going to have dual speakers out the back, uh, buttons obviously, and then there'll be a 5-inch screen on the top half, which will go up something like it'll look something like that uh, when it's done. He's got aluminum legs. I got a whole box full of parts. He's built custom buttons for this thing. And uh, I'm not sure if he's going to be mass producing these or, or not, but he's even got a spot in the bottom here for a uh, cooling fan. Um, It was a real toss-up between Adam at D-Made Dimension Designs and uh, Dwayne, which is going to be the last one. But since this one arrived the last, I figured it should be the last one in the video. Do it, do it, do it. And again, it's not put together yet, but I just wanted to show you guys that um, you know we've been doing a lot of gaming consoles, but pinballs don't get too much love. And it's starting to now, we're starting to get machines now small enough where we can start making these little mini uh, pinball machines. And uh, this is going to be running with a Latte Panda. Yeah. Instead of a Raspberry Pi or a small uh, you know, computer machine, the Latte Panda is basically a very small x86 um, computer that runs Windows 10. It actually comes with Windows 10 on board. Uh, you can get it unlicensed or if you go on eBay, I think I paid 6 or $7 for a license to license the OS. And then this is going to run right now currently Future Pinball. I'm um, not ruling out running virtual pin name or anything like that. but. The virtual pin main does require a lot more horsepower than the uh, future pinball. But um, that's it for this video. So, um, guys, thanks for watching. I'm real excited. Again, everyone, thanks for the this month's donations and uh, other items I picked up. Uh, but definitely a big thank you to uh, Adam at the Made Dimension Designs and also Dwayne uh, Ringo uh, for sending me this equipment. And I also want to thank Robert Dro for the Atari Heavy Sixer. Thank you very much for sending it and packaging it so well. I mean, it came very safe. Okay, well, in making this video, I was still editing it, and a day had gone by, and actually, as you saw, another package was uh, delivered. And you always keep an eye on eBay. I know eBay is not as good as it used to be years ago. Things, people now think ET is worth $1,000 or uh, a Donkey Kong Coleco cartridge is worth $1,200. You know, sometimes they're getting crazy with stuff that they're asking for. But sometimes, if you keep an eye out, you can still find good deals. Now, I actually have one of these already, and I really like it. And I saw this box for 30 bucks. I wasn't passing it up. So I actually have an unused 
iCade. So I have two of them now. One I'm going to keep stock, which would be uh, probably this one actually. And the one I have already, I'm probably going to make it to a Raspberry Pi arcade machine. But this thing is in really, really good shape. Um, the box would have been in even better shape. You can see it's a little worse for wear in that corner. Uh, when they were taking pictures to show the unit was unused, they took a couple of parts out of the bottom and laid it on top and just closed the box uh, on top of it versus putting it back where they were. So it kind of bent the box a little bit. But again, for 30 bucks, uh, I really cannot complain. It's in really, really good shape and adding it to the collection. So, barring uh, another package coming before I finish this video, cool. so everyone again, thanks for watching. I appreciate it. And remember, everyone, game on. Tiny Arcade fan page. Remember, don't admire people too much. They'll disappoint you. Sit, Blue Blue, sit. Good dog. Beware, I live. I am in a star.